What's up? It is Bueller and Dodge, and we are very pleased to welcome none other than Paige Van Zandt to the show today. She's going to be fighting this weekend. It is uh, Saturday, UFC 191. It's going down at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Make sure you find a place to watch it. It's on pay-per-view. If you can't watch it at your place, find a friend that's ordering it. Give him 20 bucks and bring a steak and have a good time. Paige Van Zandt taking on Alex Chambers. And uh, this is kind of an interesting matchup because she's not ranked in the top 15 and you're trying to move your way up the ladder. So how does this fight work for you in, in terms of bringing you forward in the rankings? Um, You know, for me, it's, it's a fine matchup. You can't really look at the rankings with a lot of accuracy. There is a lot of fights that need to happen before we'll have an accurate ranking system. The mm-hmm. strawweight division is just really, really new still. Um, for me, it's a great fight. You know, there isn't a lot of, again, there isn't a lot of strawweights for me to pick from. A lot of fights, a lot of strawweights already had fights or fights lined up or just fought. So for me, I'm excited to just get back in there again. Whoever the opponent is, I want to get in the cage, fight, and then get ready for the next opponent. Mm-hmm. We, we definitely saw that the, the ranking system seemed a little flawed during the Open Fighter House when they were doing um, you know, some of the rankings for that. Uh, where, where would you put yourself and where would you put Alex in the rankings if you were to do them yourself? Um, you know, I'm happy where I sit right now. Of course, I want to continue to move up. Um, it's, it's hard to say, you know. Uh, you, you have to look, and there's some fighters in the top who don't have uh, flawless records. Um, Alex is 5-2. and two. That's, that's pretty – she has a good record given the strawweight's experience. So she has a lot of fights compared to some of the fighters in the UFC. So I, I would definitely say she's higher than people think. Now, do you think that with the way the whole Ultimate Fighter went down with the, you know, the house going down with the strawweight division and introducing this division, things like that, uh, obviously, like, like Dodge just said, the rankings are a little bit flawed. Is there been any animosity, though, towards you since you were only 20 at the time? You couldn't partake in the Ultimate Fighter house, yet you got signed to the UFC anyway. Has there been any issues like you didn't earn your spot in there, anything like that, is amongst the other fighters? No, uh, you know, I haven't heard from it. You know, I was actually only 19 when I signed the Ultimate Fighter contract initially, so... <laughs> I was definitely too young for that, which is unfortunate. It would have been a great experience, but I am really happy with my journey to the UFC. I'm happy with the way things unfolded. I, I love that I was able to just go straight into the UFC. So uh, maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but I just got to get in there and keep winning fights. You- now, you said, you know, there's not a lot of girls to, to pick from right now, especially with the, you know, new new uh, weight division, you know, being added to the UFC. Do you think, what about Tisha Torres, someone that you, you would somebody you lost to in the past, something you want to, kind of go back into the rematch now that you guys are a little bit further along in your careers? Um, of course, that's something that's going to happen. I believe that that fight will happen, um, especially now I'm actually a real fighter, which it, it, it's great, but I'm going to take my time, you know. Um, when that fight's meant to happen, it'll happen, and I just got to focus for Alex Chambers. So you say you, now that you're a real fighter, you didn't consider yourself one before, even though you, were, you still had a few fights then, didn't you? Um, yeah, you know, that was, I think, my four, third or fourth fight ever in my entire life. Um, ever. I only had one amateur fight, and then I went pro. And at that point, I was just going in there, and I was winning fights because I was tough. I, I was a very, very tough person. I am very competitive, and I love to win. So I went in there making sure I was going to win a fight, and then I just didn't have the skill or technique to back up my drive. Um, You know, if you saw the fight, I definitely didn't give up. Um, I I had the willpower to stick it through till the end. But now I've been training at Team Alpha Male. They're a real camp. I have amazing technique now. I'm not amazing. I'm getting amazing technique from amazing coaches, and I'm just going to continue to get better as a fighter. Now, with you training at Team Alpha Male, which is uh, right here in Northern California where we're located as well, is it – how is it training there? I mean, you're, obviously there's a bunch of dudes there. Uh, this is a very male-dominated sport, and it's a very, it seems to be a very male-orientated gym. But the female presence in the sport is growing. Uh, do, you, do you feel like how, the comfort level, how is it? You know, I, I love being at Team Alpha Male, um, and I'm happy that more girls are being drawn to MMA. I mean, it, it, the bigger the exposure is around women's MMA, that, that's better for me. And I, I'm fine being at Smile Mail. You know, I, I love training with my guys. If I can go three, five-plus rounds with um, all the guys in my gym, then I'm going to be able to handle a very tough fight with a girl. Now, is it awkward dating somebody that you train with at the gym? Um, uh, we're going to leave the dating <laughs> questions on the side. <laughs> <laughs> So I recently saw you had uh, uh, some pictures where you're doing the cryotherapy. Is that something you picked up from your uh-huh. teammates? I know T.J. Dillashaw, I think I think Chad Mendez both do the same thing. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I love doing cryotherapy. Um, it's definitely something that was new for me, but I can really, really feel the recovery. Is my recovery time is is way faster, and um, it's something I, you know, I, I don't have a long attention span when it comes to like just sitting around and doing things. So when I go and do like other forms of therapy, it tends to take like an hour, and that's kind of drawn out with this. You go in, you freeze yourself for three minutes, you get little spot treatments, and then you're done. Hmm. And I can really, really feel the difference in my recovery time. I got to ask you this. With, uh, with mixed martial arts, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an aggressive sport. It's a very aggressive sport. Mm-hmm. And you, you look, you have the appearance of kind of a, a, a girly girl. So aside from this sport, would you consider yourself a girly girl outside, outside the cage? You know, I'm a little bit of everything. I, I love to get dressed up, and I love going out. I love pedicures and getting my nails done and getting my hair done. You know, I, I love those things, and I love getting dressed up. But I, I also grew up in the country in a town so small it still doesn't have a stoplight. So I, I come from the country. <laughs> I love dirt bike riding and fishing and playing in the mud. Um, you know, I, I, I like to do it all, and I, I think that's, a benefit for me, you know. I, I love fighting. I love being in a male-dominated sport, but I also like to dress up and go to media events. So this makes you more masculine than me because I like to play dress up and get my nails done and pedicures too, but I can't ride dirt bikes. <laughs> 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 when did you oh. m- make the decision, though? Like, okay, so you're growing up, you're a country girl. You're, you know, you're doing the dirt bike thing, but you're also doing the girl thing, painting your nails and stuff like that. What made you decide, you know what, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to punch people in the face for a living? Yeah, you know, I think it was... It wasn't like a conscious decision. It just kind of happened. You know, I, I fell I, I fell for this amazing sport, and I, I, I fell in love with it, and it just happened to blossom into a career, and I, I couldn't be more thankful. You know, I'm so blessed that I was able to turn my passion into a career, and I'm just going to enjoy the journey for as long as I can be in this sport. Well, you, you talk about being out in the mud in the country and stuff like that. You also you did a Tough Mudder uh, recently. How, how was that compared to your training? Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Um, you know, I was nervous. I was very nervous about doing Tough Mudder, especially with an athlete like Chad. You know, me and Chad ran it together. And <laughs> it, it was um, scary at first. You know, the first obstacle was a mile straight uphill, <laughs> and um, we were at very high elevation. But it was really, really, really fun, and I got to play in the mud. I got to do all sorts of obstacles, and I actually – impressed myself we ended up finishing an amazing time and I, I was surprised i was able to run 10 and a half miles with obstacles and and actually a very fast time nice so uh, how does reebok feel seeing as they're the major spart uh you know sponsor for the spartan race and you're one of their top athletes that you did tough mutter over their spartan oh i made sure i got their approval i, I always want to make reebok happy <laughs> they, they blessed me with so much stuff i definitely made sure that it was okay with them first because you know you're talking to a couple of trifecta holders here <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> not, not to toot our own horn or anything, but Dodge and I have both done all three of the Spartans. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would love to do a Spartan race. Those look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, before we let you go here, of course, you know, your fight coming up this weekend on Saturday at, at UFC 191 at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Uh, we have a question that we like to ask all the fighters that we talk to. And uh, since we haven't had the chance to talk to you before, we're going to go ahead and throw it at you today. Uh, Dodge, go for it. Yeah. All right, Paige. So who's going to win in a fight? A bear with machine guns for hands and feet, or a pterodactyl that poops chainsaws? Oh, gosh. Um, pterodactyl? I would say pterodactyl because those can fly, I believe. So they they kind of have the upper hand. They can fly. <laughs> so the pterodactyl that poops chainsaws gets the, gets the nod from Paige Van Zandt. Dodge keeps tally of this, and we've talked to a lot of your, your fellow teammates. And uh, where are we out of yeah. this? I think, I think we're about tied. Yeah, it's about split. Yeah, Uriah Faber. Nice, all right. Yeah, Uriah Faber wasn't wasn't happy with uh, with Chad Mendez's answer, I believe, if I remember correctly. Oh no, with Chad. <laughs> what so when you when you go back to the gym and you see the guys, make sure you tell them that your team pterodactyl. All right, I'll tell them. <laughs> okay, once again, it's going down this Saturday. UFC one ninety one. Paige Van Zant is taking on Alex Chambers. Make sure you get it on pay per view. It's happening at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Paige, good luck and thanks for your time today. Yep, thanks so much.